In this brush creator tutorial, we're going to be talking about pressure. Now, pressure is handled in a stack. And so what that means is you have a couple different levels where you can change things. But if you change it up here, but the foundation is uh, set one way, this won't have the effect that you want it to have. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the bottom of the stack. The first place you should check your pressure settings, the middle of the stack, and then the top of the stack so that you can be very effective when you're creating new brushes and they perform the way that you want. So let's look at the very first setting that you need to look at, and that is the system setting. This is the setting set up by your manufacturer of your computer to adjust how the pen performs with pressure. On my computer, I have a Surface device, and the Surface device has the Surface app. On Wacom devices and other devices, this may be found in other places or other apps, so check into that, and not all computers have this setting. So here we're going to click on pen pressure. Pen pressure right here is the same as pen pressure specific for your stylus. These are the same exact settings. If I change one here, it'll show over here as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this light and heavy slider. We're going to switch to pencil, clear the layer, and they provided this nice tool to see what happens when you press light and when you press heavy. And as an artist, what you want is that full range. You want light pressure to show up as a light stroke, and you want heavy pressure to show up as a dark stroke, basically is how that works. So we're going to reset this, and we're going to look at the standard setting. So here, what you're going to notice is there's very little effect of light pressure. It just goes immediately to a heavy stroke. If we set this all the way over, and I try and draw lightly, you get the exact same response as if you were pushing heavily. I prefer this over at three or four, and this is stylus dependent, which means that some stylus, like this one from Renacer that I prefer, this one has a different pressure curve. So if you're using a different stylus, you may need to set this a little bit differently. All right, so once you've made this adjustment, you can close this window. Now let's go into the software level, the Rebel 6 level, program settings for pressure. So we're going to go to Edit, Preferences, Tablet, and here you can see we have the option of pressure sensitivity. This is for the entire app. That means this is the next level that is going to adjust everything else from here on up. And you're going to see here in Tablet, Pen Pressure Sensitivity. You can see we can go from Firm to Soft, and let's look at what both of these look like. Now we're going to adjust the stroke here, pen pressure. We're going to actually reset this and bring this to zero. And what this setting does is this is how much effect pressure is going to have on your brush, which means setting it to zero means that 0% zero of your size brush size is going to be affected by pressure. So here, if I push heavy or light, you'll see some things are changing, but the size is not changing based off of how hard or soft I push. Now let's change the opacity to 100. This is going to give us a better understanding of how pressure is working and how it's set up inside of Rebel. So let's go ahead and uh, undo this line. And let's start with a soft pressure, medium pressure, and hard pressure. So you can see we have good control, being able to do light and heavy pressure. Let's go back in here to preferences and let's look at firm. All right, now I'm gonna try to do light pressure this one you'll notice over here that the light side is a little bit harder to control so on my machine I'm going to want to lean a little bit towards soft this is going to provide me with a better starting point for the rest of my adjustments now the next level is a mode specific so Rebel has these modes right here paint which is keyboard shortcut one paint and mix which is two paint and blend which is three and blend which is four Erase is not included here, but that's what's next. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to look here at Tools, Paint, Mix, and Blend, Default Pressure Curves. So Rebel 6 improves this over version 5 in that oils and acrylics, express oils, and other tools have their own pressure curves. These are where your settings go when you reset them inside of the brush creator. So here, if inside of paint, we click on paint mode. This is paint and mix, which is number two. If we set this to a crazy looking curve and we click reset curve, it's going to go back here that, because we're in oils and acrylics, is going to go back to here, paint and mix. This is the default for that. If you change this, you can click here, reset curve, and this will go back to the factory settings. This is your personal setting that affects all oils and acrylics in this mode, in paint and blend mode and blend mode. Now let's go through what one of these does and you'll understand what all of these do. There's two different options here, paint and mix paint and blend, and then this one is just blend. So we're going to be looking at paint and mix and paint and blend. If we choose mix, this is going to mix the paint, blend the colors, that type of thing. Same thing here, blend is going to mix. So because this is a darker blue, the blending property is going to happen with light or low pressure, which is this side over here. And on high pressure, you're going to see it caps out here. It's going to do a certain amount of blending and no more. This is where it's going to start to paint. So let's go ahead and look at this. So we're going to set paint to happen um, way over here. All right, so let's click OK and close this. So now when I start painting, I'm in mode three, paint and blend. I'm doing light pressure and nothing is happening. Medium pressure, nothing happening. And then just as I start getting to hard pressure, you see this giant dump of, of paint. You are going right to hard. All right, so let's look here at preferences. Again, back over here. And you can see that's reflected here. Now, if I bring this over here, and let's move this over, click OK. Now here, I'm immediately painting and immediately painting with kind of a, a slightly more than low, almost a medium level of pressure. From no pressure on the screen, this is what we're getting. Okay, so let's go in here again. Now, if we put this all the way up here, paint, you see with very light pressure, we're getting an even heavier starting point. Let's clear this layer, and I'm going to show you how to understand these settings. So preferences, curves. So what I'm going to recommend that you do, drag one of these nodes off, go here, drag, drag, and bring one of them all the way down and one of them up. Now with this set like this, you can see exactly what happens when it's set at that mode. So if we bring this very low and blend is basically set to off, we click OK. And we go here, you're going to notice that even with heavy, heavy pressure, we're still not getting that fully opaque, that full pressure showing up in our brush. Now, if we bring this all the way up, when we push here, you can see that we get very close to a, a fully heavy, uh, full pressure line with even light pressure. So let's reset that back to factory. And let's look at blending. So blending, we're going to drag this out. So we have just a single node. Let's put it really high and click OK. Here you can see with light pressure and heavier pressure what's happening here. Let's move this very low. Now 
you can see what a difference it makes here. Very different. This is pushing the paint when the pressure was set high. And then here we're doing more of a soft blend or a smudge. It's, it's not quite the same effect. It doesn't have the strength behind it. All right, let's reset that back. So that's how you play with these. Typically on a paint and blend brush for my personal use, I really like setting these to have paint happen a little bit later. And I like, and I like having blends start out actually quite heavy because I like being able to push the paint. So here with medium to light pressure, I can actually push this around and then I can start painting with a little bit heavier pressure and I don't feel like I'm doing too much work. All right, so we have our system level, which is your computer pressure level. Then on top of that, you have the program level. This is the entire program. And then above that, you have the paint mode level, which is these over here on the left. And then on top of that, we have the level of the brush. This is the highest level, and this is where you're going to find the nuance to create brushes that behave exactly the way that you want. So let's finish looking at the opacity pressure slider. And again, the way that I recommend understanding this is create just one node by dragging the other one off and then adjust it high and low. This is the amount of opacity on the left and down here, this is the amount of pressure. Now to see this behave the way that we want, we're going to go to paint mode. Let's change this to very low. And what's nice here is you can see how these pressure curves affect your brush without having to close it. So you can see the differences there. All right, now if we create a second node and we drag it down, bring this over here, what this means is with with light pressure, we're gonna get a heavy line. And as we push harder, it's going to fade out. This is not a very effective way to work because as soon as your pen pressure starts to lighten, as you get ready to pull the brush up, it leaves this little drop right here. So this is typically reversed, more like this. Light pressure and then heavy pressure. And you can see that we have low opacity and we can get a thick, heavy brush with a lot of impasto over here with heavy pressure. This is how it works in real life. Now you can adjust this by dragging it here and make a slow ramp where you have a lot of light pressure area. And then as you press heavier, it slowly builds up. And this is also a very nice effect. We can reverse this here and here you have a heavier build up and then it doesn't go all the way to full abruptly. Now let's make another node here and make a couple of sharp. So here we have a cap on the top, which means as I start, I'll get to a certain point and it won't go any higher. So I may not get to that heavy pressure, even with a firm push with the stylus. Let's reset this back to the defaults. Now in the brush creator, anything that has a curve editor, this symbol right here, this indicates that either pressure or tilt on the stylus is going to affect this parameter. You can not use the curve editors by simply dragging here or here for a little more granularity. And you can see that reflected in the line above here. Now to explain this number here, uh, to the left of zero is negative to the right is positive. What this is doing is this is showing how much influence this pressure is going to have on the size of the brush. So if we bring this over to about 20, this is going to change and vary the size of the brush head by 19%. 
Okay, let's set opacity back to zero. So this is not, so we're looking at one element at a time. Okay, now let's bring this up to 50%. So what you can see here, reflected in this line up here, if I press gently and then push really hard and then go back to gentle, there's gonna be a variance of about 50% growth here. So this is influencing the size 50%. 100% means the full possible size can be affected by pressure. Max size right here defines the range that's possible. If I bring this all the way up to 700, then we have this tiny line all the way up to this very large line. And if we bring this down to 100, then we have this very tiny line up to a fairly small line. So by default, we're gonna put this back to 300 and we're gonna leave it there for most, if not all of the brush tutorial series. There's another pen pressure setting right here inside of Shape and Grain. To learn what this does, watch that specific video and I'll go over how to use pen pressure to change shape and grain and how to use pen tilt to change shape and grain alternating between various options. All right, guys, if you have questions about pen pressure inside of Rebel 6, feel free to put that comment in the comment section below. There's a tremendous amount of flexibility in how this software can work. It has one of the most powerful brush engines that I've ever worked with. And I think that you guys, when you understand these basic principles, will really have a wonderful time adjusting things to exactly the way that you want them to work. Until next time, stay creative and have a wonderful day.